The gap was down 10% yesterday and another 2% today. And it looks like I'm not the only one who's calling out this valuation gap at the moment. It looks like the Wall Street Journal just came out with an article saying the exact same thing. And so let's dive into that and see exactly what's going on. But first, of course, let's start with why the stock declined 10% yesterday. And so as you guys smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, as you guys are well aware, the stock absolutely cratered yesterday. And you know, as of the recording of this video, the stock it has cratered again today. It's after close, I just didn't wanna update this, but it has gone under nine or $10 per share. But interestingly enough, you know, I asked to the Patreon study, what do you guys think about the dividend yield? Is the dividend something that should be cut in this environment? I would hope that they do cut the dividend because I do, I, I rather see them put that towards any outstanding debt uh, and also potentially any charges as a result of further layoffs that they might announce. But we'll see how that plays out. But the point that I do want to make to you guys is if you're looking at the dividend yield and it looks exciting, just take into account that this might be another footlocker situation where it might be a good idea to pause that dividend. So just assume that the dividend is going to be paused. Now, look, they have a lot of cash available. They don't have a ton of uh, debt, not a material amount, I would say. It's definitely manageable. So, I mean, will the dividend get cut? Probably not, but I'm going in assuming that it there's a strong likelihood that it could. And if you're thinking that the decline yesterday was just gap specific, it's not. Uh, I saw this article this morning actually, where uh, it said basically that, you know, the, the gap did lead the mall sector lower, but the whole sector as a whole is down. And it just happens to be that there's growing concerns that earnings in the back half of the year will disappoint. And that's from a holiday sales forecast from De Deloitte that's still being circulated and could also be contributing to the gloomy trading. But I always say guys, you know, try to be more pessimistic than even the management is being. And so, you know, in your models, I would recommend that, you know, mo uh, management is saying that the stock will be down uh, in the mid single digits. I would recommend that you forecast that sales will be down closer to that double digit. So maybe like eight, 9% is probably better than forecasting 5%. And then even forecasting the subsequent year, think about um, the revenues not increasing at a fast clip and also bring down the margins a little bit. I think that's the way to do this. And so here's that Deloitte article, holiday retail sales are likely to increase between 3.5 and 4.6% this year versus 7.6% percent a year ago according to Deloitte and you know they're essentially saying that the reason why there's a decreasing uh, uh, amount of spending in the current year uh, uh, a slowing growth is the decreasing pool of pandemic era savings both of which will weigh on retail sales and are reflected in their lower projected growth for the season fine this seems like a very short-term item in nature but share prices reflect the perpetual value of the security so are you telling me that you know by pushing gaps share price down 10 percent, are you saying that you know the whole company will be materially impaired based on what the share price is suggesting like we're talking you know we're now in the nine dollars per share area and this company has earned uh close to three dollars per share in the past and so you know if you're saying that the company will never ever return back to that two three dollars per share area then you're probably fine valuing it under nine uh, ten dollars per share but if you do believe that over time this thing could return call it five years then i think it could potentially be undervalued it's really up to you how you feel about the company as a whole i just think that they have stronger uh, a, a stronger brand name and a better executing ability than a company that's just going to fold uh, in the short term. And so some of the other uh, factors that they're talking about is higher gas prices, student loan repayments, and a higher percentage of spending going towards loan payments due to higher interest rates. Again, I think these are just all short term in nature, but you can see how other retailers declined. So Gap uh, was down in the afternoon, eight and a half, eight percent. Sorry, Torrid was down almost six percent. American Eagle down uh, five and a half percent. Kohl's down five percent, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, Full Locker was down a little bit. I don't care. I own this name, by the way. And then, of course, you know, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Target, they were also down. And you know, guys, I have made a video on Dollar General recently. I will link it at the end of this video. Now, here's the Wall Street Journal article. So they're saying that gaps, now, FYI, guys, this came out in August of 22nd. So I just haven't covered it on this channel yet, but they're basically saying that gaps discount is too big to ignore at this point. And you know, here's my comment 
comment on the video as a whole. I really believe that even if the consumer is weak in the back half of the year, the valuation should reflect some semblance of a going concern. You know, uh, gap trading into the single digits with run rates of in between 1.5 and 2.5 uh, per share of EPS isn't that. And I just keep repeating that point because that's really what's standing out to me. And uh, I haven't been convinced otherwise. And so the article goes on to say the Gap might have a shot at a comeback with its new leader. And so the shares of the company, which also owns Old Navy, Athletica or Athleta and Banana Republic have declined 5.4% over the last 21 years. But keep in mind what they don't mention in the article is that during that time, the company on average earned a dollar between $1.50 and $3 per share, causing the share price to fluctuate between $20 and $40 per share. So it's only earned 5.4% over the last 21 years at this reduced valuation. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, should the company come back to earning in between $1.50 and $3 per share, you could have anywhere from 50% to a triple on, on the share price based on how low it goes. And so over that period, Gap has churn, churned out four chief executive officers. And so here's actually, you know, I brought the image in for you. Here you can see it in between uh, the last 20 years or so. You can see that it's just fluctuating in between this range. And of course, earnings are going up and down. Obviously, they had an issue where they ousted their, their superstar CEO back in the early 2000s. Some of you guys who are as old as I am would remember that. And then of course, you know, the company just sort of piddle paddled and came back a little bit post uh, the uh, banking slowdown. And of course now it's back uh, below where it was even in the early 2000s. And so remember I mentioned that they had a superstar CEO in the early 2000s. Well, the article actually mentions it. So Dixon's hiring, that's the current CEO, the one that they just hired, marks the first creative minded leader at Gap since the merchant prince Mickey Drexler. That's who the, the superstar was. Who's, uh, m mind you, FYI, he does still run a small retailer in New York. He's the CEO of it. But, um, you know, if you're ever wondering what Mickey's up to lately, whose eye for style led the company to a fast growth in the 1990s. But of course it cuts both ways because Dreckler's creative decisions arguably also led to the company's decline in the early 2000s. And so his predecessor, Paul Pressler, who succeeded Drexler, was able to clean up Gap's troubled balance sheet, but messed up on merchandising. He used focus group data to inform decisions. Now, Sonia Singal, the latest CEO, seems to have also made a similar mistake where they relied on internal research to uh, make a huge bet on inclusive sizing, but it backfired when they had too small and too large items pile up. However, when I think of uh, focus group data. There's an old marketing story that I think almost every MBA grad is told of, at least I was, about consumers telling researchers that it was very important that their VCRs, I know some of you might not even know what VCRs are, but at least for us old guys, you know, that their VCRs are made in the USA. Because if you guys remember back, uh, you know, late 2000s, uh, sorry, early 2000s, late 90s, even into the 80s, um, there was a very, there's very much, and that's just all I'm aware of. Some of you older guys might be aware of this way before. There was a, a very much of a uh, make, you know, these small electronic devices in the U.S. Um, and, and, you know, when people were buying these things that were made in Japan or China or whatever, it, it, it seemed to not be looked uh, well upon. And so, you know, if you were to ask the average consumer, they would say that they, it's very important for them for these things to be made in the USA. But then when you talk to them at the checkout, they're not, they are not able to answer where their VCRs were made. And so essentially what they're telling you is that for the researchers, they're saying that it's very important that their products are made in the USA, but there's a completely dis different buying decision process happening at the store and they don't actually care where these things are made. Fast forward 25 years or so, you can really see that the consumer does not care where the item is made so long as it works. And so the moral of the story is to take focus group comments with a grain of salt as there are other things going on. So you have a thesis with the focus group, test the thesis, don't just believe it. And I think that's where uh, you can run into problems if you just take the focus group's data uh, as uh, sacrosanct. And the article went on to say exactly the same point that I just made. Leaning on data isn't a bad idea, but what you need is a leader who knows how to use it correctly. Gap's newest CEO has led global design and development 
at the Jones Group, which included Nine West and Anne Klein, and he seems to know a thing or two about fixing troubled brands. He helped revive Barbie in the early 2000s by simplifying the product lineup, and then again in 2014 by adding more body styles and ethnicities. In addition to Dick Dickinson, Gap also hired Chris Blakesley, former president of Fast Growing Aloe Yoga, as a CEO of Athleta earlier this month. So that's actually a really good hire. I didn't know about that until now, but it seems like you got the right CEO in place. You got the Walmart guy he heading the Old Navy brand, which I think is a perfect move because there's a lot of uh, similarities between the uh, Walmart's clothing um strategy and old navy's clothing strategy so i think that works and now you have a former president of a yoga brand who's now moving in to manage uh gaps athleta brand so i think that all works and the other thing a similar article mentions and it's something that i mentioned in the previous video the first video that i made on gap is that you know fortunately for the new ceo uh the interim ceo bob martin has cleaned up much of the mistakes from 2021 where the you're now seeing inventory down considerably from a year earlier and they had announced layoffs that are expected to realize 300 million dollars in annualized savings which is expected to return the company back to profitability and you, you guys see it in the models uh and you're probably definitely seeing it in your models and you're definitely seeing it in the company's uh forecast that they expect to return to profitability and so we should be forecasting the business as a profitable business going forward and of course I finish off the article with a little bit of a warning yes the apparel industry is expected to face headwinds in the next few months so you have to be aware of that shoppers are being more selective about discretionary purchases and you know of course the resumption of student loan payments could further unravel apparel spending I get it but this is not going to be forever and so you know the benefit of having four brands with roughly 15 billion in annual sales value focused Old Navy, Basics Focused Gap, Athletic Leisure Brand, Athleta, and Banana Republic, which sells dressy office wear, it means that the company is well positioned for whatever kind of economic backdrop or trend prevails over the next 12 months. However, beware guys, this is retail. Retail's not easy. Fashion missteps are still a risk. And so really, what am I looking for? I would say that I'm looking for two major things. And these are the same two things that I saw uh, Mary Dillon push with at Foot Locker. And the first one is let's uh, create a program where you start shutting down some of the non-performing stores. So let's cut that uh, from the portfolio. And then the second thing is, how can the company move more towards an omni-channel strategy? And obviously the third thing, and I'm alone in this case, but I would love for them to just come up with a plan to completely get rid of all of that debt. Look, you're a retailer, the business is just harder. I don't think retailers in general should be operating with a ton of debt or any debt at all. I really think that they should be uh, uh, debt light and have the uh, availability to acquire potentially strong with struggling retailers uh, in that situation if it arises. But I really don't think they should be continuously operating with debt. So I would love that sort of um, uh, strategy laid out as well. So those three items, let's see if they come out with it. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is now as this stock continues to trade down, I'm gonna, in a subsequent video, give you guys an idea of what sort of like the options opportunities look like in this particular situation. So I'll leave it there for you guys and I'll see you later.